hello and welcome back to the channel. Have you ever been in the situation that you are watching some tutorials on YouTube or you bought a course, everything is fine and you understand everything and then you try to do something on your own and it just doesn't work for you so you can't really switch from watching tutorials to do some real stuff. In this video I want to go through problems and also share my tips how you can really efficiently work with tutorials and video documentation. So let's jump right into it. I really think that video tutorials and video courses are the best way to gain new knowledge. And it's not only about programming, it's about everything that you want to learn. So actually, if we're talking about programming, you are not just jumping to some website, for example, you want to learn Ruby, then you are jumping to Ruby website and you read documentation. So actually with the official documentation or some articles, the problem is that normally it's not structured or it is lacking some things or you don't see the instant feedback when you are doing something. And this is completely different with videos. This is why they are working so great. So with videos you are starting to get knowledge from the very beginning and normally the author of video or course already planned like increasing difficulty of the video or the course, which actually means you are not just throwing in the water at the beginning, you really start step by step and with every step we are increasing complexity. And if we will compare videos, for example, with books, videos are much better, because in programming books you have some examples, sure, but they can be first of all out of the date, and secondly, you don't even know if they are working. If you see in video, normally it will compile for you also. Sure, it can be out of date, but at least you can check the date there. And also, if the author did some mistakes, you can see these mistakes and how he is fixing them. Also, normally author will share some steps and advices on each section of the video. But of course, watching a tutorial is really super different from writing a code. First of all, because you are seeing the production version. So normally, if we are talking about, for example, YouTube video or course, you don't see a lot of errors and everything is already prepared. Which means you didn't see like 90% of work which was there before this project or this video was prepared. And you don't see the amount of mistakes that author did. And actually the point is that you must do all these mistakes by yourself. And you start to compare yourself with the author and you are thinking, okay, I can't write so fast, so good, or prepare everything in advance. And here are some steps that can help you to switch from watching videos to writing code. And the first step is just to follow alone. So it's not enough to just watch the video and watch how author is coding, even if you understand 100%. The main point is that when you are typing code, you are making mistakes and then you need to fix them. So actually you can't really duplicate code with 100% accuracy, which means you will have some errors and you will fix them. And at least you will spend some time in debugging, maybe in googling, which means you already did some work and you already wrote some code. Sure you didn't write it from the scratch, but it doesn't matter, you have already some problems with the real code. The next step here is to do some exercises which are going together with video or normally with course. And it is even better when you are getting some exercises not at the end, but just by following along some videos. Which means for example you implemented like a half of a project and then author says, ok, this feature you can try on your own. So first of all it is a little bit isolated and it is prepared for you. So author is sure that you have enough knowledge to make this feature on your own. And normally he will start from some small feature and then increase complexity. Which means it's not like you are making something on your own, but yes you implement something, but really isolated and the small feature with knowledge that you for sure have. 
And the third step is most complicated, but really necessary. You need to start typing and coding on your own, your own project, or you can continue developing the project, for example, that you did in the course. This doesn't matter, but I really prefer to make my own projects, because it is more interesting for me. It's really difficult to make long-time project that you don't like. This is why I always pick the idea that you really want to implement and do this on your own. Also, when you are doing it on your own from the start, you can really say after some time or in interview that you did this project really by yourself fully. And here is one important thing that you need to know. A lot of people think that they need to know the whole framework or the whole language to start writing code. And this is simply not possible, because at the moment when you are learning something, you are forgetting something that you already learned. So really you can learn only if you are coding it. And then you can see your old code, compare with new code and understand some framework or some language. And this is completely opposite to other professions. If you are doing surgeries, sure, you must have enough knowledge to do them. But with programming it's completely different. You must start as soon as possible. Which means you don't need to learn the whole framework or the whole language. It is enough to learn a little bit to start doing your stuff or your project that you want to. And then with every problem you're starting googling, you're starting learning additional things that you might need. Because it's really not possible to learn the whole language or the whole framework like in normal time. Now I want to share with you my tips how you can go through videos or courses more efficiently. And tip number one is increasing or decreasing the speed of the video. And it may sound really easy, but not a lot of people are using it. So if the author, for example me, I'm speaking really slow, this means you can simply increase the speed like 1.5 or 2 and you're good to go. Or it is too fast for you to gain the information and you can make it slower. And some people like to skip through videos just by clicking. And actually it doesn't really work, because with increasing or decreasing the speed you don't miss anything. Sure, with increasing speed you need to stay more focused, but you get used to it. When you are skipping the whole sections, you can easily miss some important information that author can give you. My tip number two is to always not hesitate and ask creator of the course. So in normal courses you can and must ask questions, which actually means if you didn't understand something or maybe you think you didn't understand correctly, don't hesitate to ask directly under the video. It will help both you and other students, because probably they have the same problems. And tip number three is really related to tip number two. You need to ask the creator of the course, but it would be really nice if you will first Google and then try to debug code on your own. Normally a lot of mistakes that I'm seeing from people are just typos, which actually means that you need to practice finding bugs or googling answers. And it's not only for the author, but it is for you, because you really need these two skills the whole life while you are working as a programmer. So online courses and online videos are a great source of knowledge, but this is just a knowledge, you don't get any real production experience if you are just watching them. You need to start applying your knowledge to your own projects. And actually, if you want to learn more about programming, I have a lot of advanced courses regarding different web technologies. And I will link them down in the description box below, so don't forget to check them out. And if you like this video and you want more content like this, don't forget to put thumbs up to support me and subscribe to the channel. And as always, happy coding!